Mom's Worst Day podcast is an avenue for mothers to share their stories, things that did not go quite as planned, and interesting trials that come with motherhood. The podcast aims to encourage and uplift women, ease the burden of their ever-present mom guilt, and to let them know that they are not alone. I'm your host, Nicole Chikwe, and welcome to Mom's Worst Day. You've got this, mama. Hello, 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 everyone. Welcome to another episode of Mom's Worst Day. I am here with the gorgeous and stunning Veron. Anyway, <laughs> I'm going to let her introduce herself, but she is fabulous. Veronica, welcome oh, to the show. Please thank you. introduce yourself to the thank listeners. Thank you so much for having me, Nicole. <laughs> Hi, everyone, everyone who's listening. Uh, my name is Veronica E.B., and I'm a mom of um, three amazing little ones. Well, actually, maybe not that little. Um, I'm also an entrepreneur. Um, and I call myself an entrepreneur just because I am I have so many things underneath my belt. Mm-hmm. Um, so instead of saying like, oh, I'm the founder of so-and-so because there's so many different things and I work for myself. Okay. Um, it's just best to say I'm an entrepreneur. A you know? flex. Yes. A flex. It's like, oh, I do so many things. But please, it's okay. We'll, we will, you're here, so we will listen. Yeah. Can you list everything that you do? Um, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> So I have a beauty brand um, and we have nail polish. So mm-hmm. that's one of the uh, businesses that I run. It's fashion. Everything centered around fashion and beauty, um, thankfully. The other thing we do is um, consultancy agency for fashion. And so that is the bulk of what I do. And it's into advisory for brands, uh, also no personal styling for a lot of women. And that can just go far. Photo shoots, wardrobe detox, wardrobe arrangements, um, wardrobe curation, personal uh, shopping, And then we also do for corporate events, clients, red carpet, fashion shows, TV shows. Oh, Um, All of that is within the agency and it just runs. And I have a really good um, set of stylists, team of stylists that help me with that. And then also I do a lot of luxury consultations. So that also has to do with human behavior, how people need to utilize the space. Mm -hmm. Um, And that has come from fashion, funny enough. And so with that... We just um, advise, and I do a lot of consultation for that, for people who have luxury salons or how um, retailers need to utilize space for their consumers to benefit. So that that's part of what we do. Amazing. Yeah. So, um, I mean, I love Veronica. I follow Veronica for a very long time. <laughs> and when I started the podcast, she was on my list because I knew I wanted to talk to her about mm the way she presents herself and why Mm. it's important to present yourself in a certain manner because she has three kids. She looks amazing. And I know that she loves working with women, Mm -hmm. helping them build their wardrobes, helping them curate and figure out what their style is and Mm -hmm. how to dress their body types Mm -hmm. and things like that. So I knew I wanted to speak (laughs) with you. So I'm so honored that you took out the time um, to come and have this little chat with me. So thank you. You're so welcome. So have you always been interested in fashion or is this something that just kind of so I have you know I have I didn't know honestly speaking I didn't know that it was like a career that I just knew that I actually liked clothes and in Mm. the way that I liked clothes I was obsessed not in the way that many people think so today if you ask me who are my top you know global um, brands or designers sometimes it takes me a lot of time to try to figure out who I like because I'm attracted to clothes and the way it looks and the way they fit and many times when I would browse through magazines and I'll tell my friends oh my goodness just look at the way this top is look at the cut the way it just sits on the skirt and they're like I don't I don't understand I don't, it's like an outfit it. yeah and I would realize that I'm just so drawn and I would pull out tear do tears from magazines and I started to realize that I really actually love clothes and I like the way that it sits on women and I like the way that clothing can actually transform you lift your mood just transform your sense of style and make you look the part um, just in all by making the right decisions on what you wear. So it's something that I've liked for years and then has gradually turned into um, a career. Okay. So um, how has your style evolved? I mean, if you've always been like super stylish, would mm-hmm. you say that your style has changed since you started having kids? Yeah. And what what's, 
how's that been? Gosh, my style has changed. I mean, so many, you know, so many things affect our style. My style personally has changed over the years. I mean, I've been a tomboy at one point, mm. um, extremely avant-garde at one point, sagging my jeans, really baggy, oversized clothing at one point, um, fitted clothes at one point. Um, so it's always changing. Even when I was during my pregnancies, my style was oversized, supersized. Everything I did was supersized. But with women, like all of us, it's always forever going to change. We can't be categorized into one sense of style. Mm -hmm. And and I understood that later on in my in my life. I, I understood that, you know what, everything um, about me makes me who I am, but we can categorize these are the different types of styles. So where I have now found a formula that works, and if I do consultations with women, um, based on the things you like, based on your lifestyle, based on the, the way your day goes, if you're really busy, are you an entrepreneur? Is your career, do you work a lot? And Which means even on the weekends, a lot of functions and everything you do centered around work, then that means you will have a certain type of style and we kind of think in terms of that for women and so I feel like I applied it on myself first and I realized okay great this is my sense of style so now I know that my style is very feminine and also pure and clean um, and that defines me more than anything else when I'm looking and I'm shopping or I'm getting dressed in the morning there are details and elements that kind of create that and that's my style. I love that um, so I love that you mentioned you had like you've gone through like different phases, mm-hmm. right? Because that yeah. takes me back to some of the phases that you've I've gone through too. Gone through. <laughs> I think we all have, right? Um, I had like a whole. So I used to be like an Altair kid. Mm-hmm. No one ah. believes me, but I really was. Before Altair was a thing. Yeah, I was gonna say like Altair just became um, yeah. before um, before that time. So you're a pioneer. I thank you very much. <laughs> thank you. So I used to be an Altair kid. So I used to do like the really messy like mm-hmm. eyeliner because oh. you want it to look like runny, mm-hmm. right? And then I used to have like the beehive and mm. then I'll have like my weave and I'll back home my weave. Wow. The whole the whole works. Oh, wow. I was super cool. Yeah. Looking back on it, like, I mean, I took down all those pictures from Facebook. Really? There's You're no, going through a phase. I was going yeah. through a phase. Um, <laughs> but yeah, style, style evolves, evolves. because we change mm-hmm. as well. Um so one of the issues that I found when mm-hmm. I started having kids mm-hmm. was now kind of figuring out what my style was going to be yeah. because we associate, well, at least for me, I always associated being a mother with dressing a certain way. Mm. And mm. it now means your skirts have to be like, you know, three quarter. Like, well, now mm-hmm. you've changed. You're not a woman. Yeah. You know, you've born life. Mm-hmm. So you have to be responsible. <laughs> like, you can't be walking around like mini skirts. Uh-huh. So I really struggled. I think for the first couple of years mm. maybe I only ever wore like maxis or boo-boos mm. you know because I'm modest now mm. and I'm a mom yeah. and ha- do you find that you've had uh, moms who have lost their lost their sense of style or yeah. lost direction fashion wise mm-hmm. after they've had kids and yes. how do you help those sorts of situations like myself oh, yeah you know um it's it's well so I'll say this women, um, not necessarily like men, we're not loyal to anything. You know, when it comes to fashion, we're not. We will try 500 brands, you know, like we're we're just lending ourselves out to anybody who can fix our problem. Mm -hmm. But there's always something that needs to be fixed. So even like you rightfully said, as a mom, sometimes people want to embrace more. I want to show my bump. And so I want to dress a certain way. Or I still want to be able to wear my short shorts or my thing. Or I'm hot all the time. So Mm -hmm. I need to dress for the heat. Mm -hmm. You know, I want to be naked and Mm -hmm. I don't want to wear clothes. Or I want to cover up because I'm gaining so much weight. So that in, in part. every yeah, right? <laughs> so in every aspect of it, we are there's something that we don't like. Um, but there are always things that we do like. So most people have maybe they have bigger boobs or some people they absolutely like their face or their legs or their arms. And I always say just try to embrace things that you like. So maybe a color that works for you, maybe mm. white or maybe uh, polka dots or prints. Then you stay towards that and you just keep on rocking that in the sense of style that you like. So if you're someone who is maybe avant-garde, which means you like to volume and you like it to be a bit extra, then I would always say, OK, go for things that are sleeveless and, you know, that just kind of show your shoulders a little bit more. More and they have like big sleeves or like uh, huge. And then if you're someone who likes to show your legs and you're like, I was wearing mini skirts before. I'll be damned if I'm if I don't wear my mini skirts anymore. Then I'll say, great. That's me. Then you want to <laughs> <laughs> then you want to go for something that maybe has like a round neck and that is more like a tent dress but really short. Because mm. then that way you can kind of still show your legs and get away with it. And it's not that you're a mom and you need to be responsible. I don't necessarily think that um, your sense of style means that you have you have to be seen or dictated in a certain way. I feel that you can always pull from what you like and 
always try to make that work. Now, to also say this is women's style change all the time. Um, our style changes when our career changes. For instance, maybe you were an entrepreneur. Now you got a career, a job in 9 to 5, or you went from 9 to 5 to being a stay-at-home mom, or you've relocated to another country, for mm-hmm. instance. Culture, for me, changed my sense of style a lot. Moving from the state to Nigeria, where people are slight more modest um, in in terms of lengthwise and what they wear to go out, mm-hmm. um, but more extravagant in terms of um, the design, you know, so that also changes. What about if you got a promotion at work? What if you've moved from the East Coast to the West Coast and now it's very hot where you are and you have like a lot of cold clothes? So our style is always changing. And one of the things I'll definitely say is you should never stop being who you are. You write down a few things that you absolutely love about yourself, your lifestyle. And when it comes to style, details that you like and you hold on to that no matter what it is that you're doing and then you just find a good balance in between I love that so I wanted to ask right because Mm -hmm. people equate having style with having lots of money yeah and it it really feels like um is it wrong though because I wanted to ask um yes one is that is that correct Mm -hmm. that you need for you to have style you need money Mm -hmm. and number two for People who are on like a budget, mm-hmm. what would you say are like key for moms yeah. in particular who are on a budget? Mm-hmm. What would you say are like key fashion okay. or must wardrobe, haves. wardrobe must, must have. haves? Okay, so that's um, one of the questions. And you know what's crazy? I have um, a style thing coming up and I remember asking, we put it on social media and asking a lot of people, what are some of your biggest questions? This is the big, that que- question always keeps coming up oh it's because you know you have to have a lot of money exactly. oh you know you have to and i'm always like that's that's such a lie you have to actually make really smart shopping choices um in order to to develop and i think everyone has style what creates great style or defines great style is consistency it's being really consistent and what creates the consistency is making very um, smart shopping choices Mm -hmm. so it's a huge misconception you do not have to have a lot of money to have great style um, but you do have to make smart choices now for me regardless of if you're pregnant or if you're not um, there are two things that you should have in your wardrobe is a really nice blazer and a white and a white tee yes Um, agreed those are two major things that you have to have in your wardrobe and a shirt dress I always say shirt dress for people that are pregnant because you can have a I always say shirt dress even if you're not pregnant because your shirt dress from when you're not pregnant can convert into um, a layer an extra clothing of layer for when you are pregnant Mm. and I did that a lot because um, I always wanted to try to conceal the baby bump for a few a few months while I was progressing but a white T a white V and funny enough you can always get them my my number one place to get them Zara Zara has them season after season in every color a v-neck white tee from Zara and then you can get a blazer um, a boyfriend blazer is always best whether it is a sleeveless one or it is with sleeves because some people are very funny um, but it's always uh, usually three quarter um, mm-hmm. so that it's slightly slouchy and you can kind of roll up the sleeves mm. and then when you are pregnant it just kind of goes over everything it goes over your maxi dresses I did that a lot um, it goes over your v, your v uh, tees it wears that with that as well with long skirts it even works with jeans um, it works with a lot of things so those are two things I think you should have and then the shirt dress just because you always go for one that has like a button down funny enough I remember then I was pregnant with my my daughter and and this was in 2014 and I had gone to Jewel by Lisa and I got they had like this Jewel by Lisa shirt dress and I bought it um I, I remember every day I would call Zara, no no jokes. And sometimes I would go there months after and I'm like, can I get, can you guys just make this again? Even after the pregnancy, I wore it continuously. So before the pregnancy, I wore it throughout my entire pregnancy. Buttons were falling off. I was still wearing it. <laughs> so I started, and it was asymmetrical. So I would wear it over like t-shirts and like skirts and shorts and everything and just layer it. And then even after I went back to wearing it, I would button it back again. But mm. those are three things that I, I say that if you're pregnant, you definitely want to make sure you have in your wardrobe. I love, listen... Oh, man, like, I wish I knew all of this, like, what, eight years ago, because my pregnancies are usually a hot mess. Oh, yeah. Because um, I just don't know what I'm what, supposed to be doing yeah. and what I'm supposed to wear. So I'll just end up wearing nasal's clothes or yeah. a boo and, and, and you don't want to be you don't want to be messy you know during the pregnancy you That's still want to be put, to, look put together mm-hmm. and, and, you, think, and yeah. it makes you feel good as well yeah. because you're looking messy you feel a mess and you're yes. already like oh you know pregnancy is the worst thing yeah in the world. and it shouldn't be and yeah. you know what i realized because a lot of times women 
don't have what to wear, they shy away from going out. You know, and yes. so you know what? It's a psychological thing. You don't even realize it. I've done consultations for women. And when we look at the form and, and we're and we're having those consultations, I'll ask them things like, okay, so what's your um your social life? Oh, I don't really have a social life. I don't really go out. You know, I'm always busy, I'm always working. And I'm like, that's probably because your wardrobe is, is a hot mess. But when we now get the outfits together and we start curating, we're looking for places to, to go. go. <laughs> because you're like, oh, I got this cute outfit. Oh, this wrap that's top me. is cute. Mm-hmm. And then you're like, Hey, what are you doing on Thursday night? <laughs> Do you want to just grab a drink, meet up for lunch, coffee? Anything. You're looking for anywhere yeah. to go because, Agreed. you know, you actually have the, the you can, funny, funny enough, you can find your clothes in your wardrobe and you, you now have things to wear out. Yeah. <laughs> that is, yeah. Wow. That is true. I never mm-hmm. actually thought about it because, yeah, when, all through my pregnancies, I become like a hermit. Mm. But I remember there was a time we're supposed to go um, on like a double date just to watch mm-hmm. a movie mm-hmm. in film house, nothing mm-hmm. fancy. And I couldn't find anything to mm. I couldn't find anything to wear. Mm-hmm. And I break I start crying. Oh I'm like, gosh. oh so I'm not going. Mm-hmm. And I was like, oh, but it's just a film house. Just yeah. wear a pair of jeans. I'm like, just wear a pair of jeans. Yeah. I can't fit into anything. So I didn't go. And I felt so isolated. Mm. And I always carry that isolation throughout my pregnancies because I didn't want to see anybody. Mm. But that's because one yeah. of the reasons could very much have just been. I felt a mess. Yeah. I don't look good. Mm-hmm. I don't want to see anyone. Mm-hmm. So, And people have a lot of problems shopping with pregnancy. And I also get, oh, should I shop? And I, For my first, I did. Mm-hmm. I shopped quite a lot. And I made sure that I bought a lot of maternity clothes. For my second, I didn't. Um, what I did is I bought the jeans. So, of course, I was... Sp- sp- just getting Ready. bigger spreading <laughs> so I bought jeans but I kept as many of my t-shirts as I could and just ca- kind of just reworked them and skirts skirts helped a lot with elastic uh, mm-hmm, bands mm-hmm, um, mm-hmm. did a lot and things with pockets and then for my daughter I bought uh, what I did buy that was maternity wear I bought dresses um, and guess what I wear those dresses. My daughter is six now, six and a half. And I still have about three of my dresses, maternity dresses. And they're short. They're all like short dresses, but they're like canopy dresses. Oh, I see. Um, And one of them in particular is blue. I get compliments. It is the craziest thing. Even to the day, every time I wear people are like, oh my God, I really like your dress. And I'm like, it's a maternity dress. Wow. So, you know, once again, you can put, and it made me start thinking, I'm like, well, maybe I should start looking towards maternity clothes to trying to find out, you know, for people that want to try to cover themselves up with their sense of style, because it seems like I'm getting a lot of compliments from here. Maybe this can work. So don't ever think that if you're shopping and you're buying something that's maternity wear, that you can't put it to good use. Just make smart, really smart shopping exactly. decisions. Exactly. That's so again, it comes down to using your money in the best way the and best just way. being smart with the things that exactly. you buy as opposed to just buying things willy-nilly because exactly. some of some people mm-hmm. like, so, so don't shop emotionally that's the thing don't be an emotional shopper I am like, I'm, just, like I'm having I'm like oh I'm just having a rough day and something I'm like oh let me just go and have a quick look and buy something but that never works out because then you buy emotionally and guess what you end up not wearing it again ever so and so that, it's just that, a waste of yeah. it's a waste of time waste of money yes. and then I'm like oh yeah I don't have money to buy quality clothes mm-hmm. but I do you just wasted it I just wasted it, it. Yeah. on things that don't even make any sense okay Mm -hmm. thanks for that other useful tip (laughs) (laughs) so I wanted to talk um, a bit about your kids your kids um, I mean they're old enough do they have like an input over your style like do you ever wear anything and your sons are like oh, oh my gosh <laughs> you say what this? is this they do you oh. know it's I never thought that they would because as much as people think say you know Veronica you're very put together and things like that I'm not a I'm not at home constantly obsessing over clothes does okay. that make sense so yeah. I'm not in my wardrobe saying today I'm gonna try on everything I'm not like that I'm actually really quick to get ready I go I'm like okay I'll wear this and this and this every once in a while I might bring out a few things because I'm trying to just find a nice way to combine some things mm. or I'm in a mood but it's not something that's um, that I do often at home um, now that you even say that last week I had um, a- a- somewhere to go and I remember bringing out three options and wearing it and my son who's about to turn 10 says, oh, you look fancy. I like this outfit. And so my daughter co-signs, oh, you look really nice. And I was like, oh, should I change? And he was like, no, don't change. I like the outfit. And I was like, okay. And I ended up wearing it and everyone complimented me when I went out. Oh, and I was bad. like, I was happy for them because I wore what they <laughs> selected um, because I, I wanted to change. But I was like, okay, well, you know what? They chose, they they like this outfit. So I'm going to just stick to it. But they do. They give me input. Sometimes he'll be like, I don't like this outfit. I'm like, really? You don't? Because <laughs> my two are at home. One one is away in school. But even when he's around, they'll be like, oh, you look nice. Oh, I like this outfit, mom. Oh, I like your shoes. Or, 
you know. So I'm like, oh, okay, you guys are paying attention. I Thank like you. That. Oh. Yeah. I can't wait for my kids to get older. Yeah, yes. For oh. us to have these, for Honey, us to have these enjoy them now because while they're not saying anything. They're going to be all in your business whether you ask for it or not. Just giving their input. Did anybody ask you? Oh my God. <laughs> um, so I wanted to ask about your kid. You have three amazing yeah, kids. Yeah, thank you. And you're doing a hundred different things. Mm. How <laughs> are you coping? How are you managing? Because it must be a lot. It is. You know what's funny? Um, hmm. When they were younger, I thought they needed me more. They need me more now. Right. So you, you'll realize that, you know, funny enough, they didn't actually need me as much as they need me now because then they weren't really talking. You know, now <laughs> they are talking. So they constantly need me. Um, I can't be everything at every time. But what I can do is in the moment that I'm there, I'm there. I'm pr- very present when I'm present. Um, and I make the time, even if it's in small batches for them. So now what I do and what I've done differently is before where I would work around the clock um, and I would I would work around the clock, but I would communicate with my kids all the time. So periodically through through the day I would be talking to them as soon as they got home from school I would talk to them on the phone I would FaceTime them and we just kind of keep those um, lines of communication open consistently however now that they're much older I have you know I said I have the right to create a break Um, and one of the things that I learned from uh, a friend of mine who does a really good with processes and systems was she was like you need to schedule things in blocks and just kind of pencil it in like you have an appointment Um, and I was like wow that actually makes sense so now there are two days out of the week that my kids have early days from school and they're home mid-afternoon I am home within 30 minutes of them being home. So I'll either be home right when they get home so they can see me and I will not leave the house for the rest of the night. I'm home. I'm in. So we will go over things together, homework, and maybe if they have lessons, they'll have their lessons and everything. And during when they're having lessons or reading time, I'm quickly sending emails or working or doing a few things. But I make sure that I'm within the space with them. Then if they go outside to play, I can quickly, you know, f- finish up with things that I have to do. And then in the evening, we spend time together because then, you know, they talk to you. Mm-hmm. Um, and and as a mom, I've realized I'd have to listen, you know, even if it's mundane and even if they've told me 500 things, my daughter will come up. Mommy, the other day in school, I had a cut. Yeah. And I'm just thinking to myself, I've seen you for three days now. You did not mention the cut. And then her, her brother would say, God, you, the cut was from three days ago. And then she'd be like, no, but it still hurts. And I'm like, oh, I'm so sorry. You know, I'm sorry that you have this cut. What's wrong? Okay, mm-hmm. no problem. Did you go to the nurse? Yes. So yes. <laughs> I'm making sure that I'm very, very present, no matter what it is for them. I'm trying to make sure I'm away from my phone. Um, so that I'm focused on them a lot. We're either reading or whatever it is that they want to watch on TV. Or if they're outside, I'll play with them a little bit and come in. But I'm there. And then I make sure that my days start really early. Um, I make sure that we have spend time in the morning together. We pray every morning together before they go to school. Some mornings I will go with them, drop them at school with the driver, and then come home. Um, and then my days will start right after that. So even in the morning after I work out and come home, I shower and get dressed with them so that even if they, after we've done morning prayer and they've gone to school I'm now focused on work so I'm working from home even before I get to the office Mm -hmm. so just to maximize my time a lot lot better that's incredible you um, talking about this schedule blocking you said yes yeah that's insane yeah. I think that that would be so helpful for mm-hmm. moms because we're just um, for most moms like yeah. myself we're just kind of winging it and seeing how yeah. the day goes mm-hmm. and that's how the day gets away from you and then you're not really flourishing with your kids even your work is floundering as mm-hmm. well because you're not scheduling things properly mm-hmm. or you're distracted a oh, lot exactly. when you're with the kids you're when, constantly distracted exactly constantly on the phone mm-hmm. like some of us yeah. <laughs> um, and just not being intentional with that yeah. time so I love that you mentioned it takes a lot of effort it's not something that um just happens naturally because i think one of the things i struggled with was Mm -hmm. i felt like when i became a mom you know things would just fall into place because Mm -hmm. i'll be mothering and mothering is something that just comes naturally to every woman and it's perfect but but it's not it takes a lot of work a lot of scheduling and help and organization and you know even if you're not getting everything right Mm. I mean progress not perfection right but help 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 is so important like having like a good tribe of people around you and support system is key Mm -hmm. um so I remember when you had your daughter Mm -hmm. um I remember thinking I feel like I was no I was not pregnant but I feel like 
what wait, what's the age gap between your second and your third? Um, four years. Four years. Because yes, I, you were. I think around the time somewhere I, yeah, in between you I, got yeah, pregnant. I was pregnant. Yes. And I was thinking, oh, you know, wow, wouldn't it be so crazy if I had a third? Mm-hmm. You know, you're one mm-hmm. of other... It's You might not know this, but at the time when you had your... People weren't really having like three kids. Yeah, I know. It was two, it like was two. two and done. <laughs> so I remember you being pregnant. I was like, wow, <laughs> a pioneer. Yeah. She, she, I surprised myself. <laughs> I, 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 I was surprised. Like, wow. She <laughs> went for this thing, you know, yeah. good on her. And then you had your daughter mm-hmm. and it was fantastic. But mm-hmm. what was it like um, having another kid after like four years? Yeah, it was, it's so different. Girls Isn't and boys it? are so different different because you know I had the two boys and um, like you rightfully said I was just with motherhood I was like oh it's just gonna go like this and like that I've got this under control boys don't need a lot you know they're easy to manage and then I found out that boys don't need a lot when they're younger but as they get older, they actually need, they do need a lot mm-hmm. um, because mm-hmm. you have to be very intentional with them. Yes, 100%. Um, now, my daughter, on the other hand, when I had her, you know, it was like having a newborn all over again. Like it was parenting 101, yeah. completely different. You know, I, I just I've never experienced anything like that before. I feel like with her. I now was a real parent. <laughs> I was li- seeing myself. You know, I was like raising myself. Yeah, you know? I agree. Um, it was a lot because there was a gap. The, the difference between the first and the second is two years. And then, of course, the second to the third is four years. And so I would gotten my body back. I was on cruise control, you know, and then this, my daughter comes along. Um, and so I, I remember that I went through a very mental challenging struggle for me um, because at that time in my career, I just kept saying, oh, my goodness, what am I going to do? You know, I've just already done this twice and now I'm pregnant again. How am I going to manage? You know, will I be able to come back? And so for me, it was mental. I was weighing it that how can you be how can you feel so bad and be thinking of your career when God has blessed you with another child? Do you mm-hmm. understand? Like why you're, you're being very ungrateful right now. But I'm just being honest, like we go through a lot of mental struggle. And mm-hmm. also I was getting closer to 40. And so I'm thinking like, oh, goodness, you know, I. I'm almost 40. Is this something I want to go through again? But at this point, how am I now? My mental capacity had changed. When I had my first one, I was not even, I was 30. And now I'm almost 40. So there's a huge like eight, eight, eight year difference in between. I have changed a lot. Mm -hmm. Um, You know, as a person, as a mother, as a wife, as a a student of the world, I changed so much. Um, But one of the things that I did do was I remember I've always kept a journal. Um, right since I was 12 and I love to read so with my third I made sure that I wrote down um, daily my experiences how I was feeling what I was going through and what I the person I wanted to become through this journey of motherhood and um, uh, you know when I look back now I realize that I was able to go through it successfully because of that going back and reflecting helped me to continue to be better a better mom uh, and a better person to myself Mm -hmm. so that I could be a better mom to my kids so it was a big difference from having a two boys and a girl um and then a big difference because of the age the age gap as well yeah, yeah. that's that i found that so challenging as well mm-hmm. the difference between my second and my two daughters my mm-hmm. second and my third is almost 5 years mm-hmm. even more wow. than yeah it's almost 5 years Veronica, in the hospital, I was a wreck. I can imagine. Like, even to change the type, I was like, hey. Mm-hmm. I said, I can't believe I'm yeah. back And you know what? what? It's slightly embarrassing because I'm like, but I should know this exactly. stuff now. So the, 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 um, the nurse was saying to me, like, ah, but ma, don't you have... I was like, eh, like, ah, ah. where does this thing go? Yes. You know, even to, like, mix her formula. Mm-hmm. It, it was, it was, I don't yeah. know. And just like you had said, like, I felt like I was on cruise control. Mm-hmm. I had gone my, listen, you know, I'm doing my fit fam, <laughs> yes. baby girl for life. Yeah. I was just cruising around Lagos and then, oh. All of a sudden, yeah. Dele has entered. Yeah. <laughs> but, you know, we move still, yes. you know, we still in well, here. Well, you look great. I mean, you snatched back, Thank huh? you. Uh, no, 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 no. I had to fight for my life. Yeah. I, had to, I had to fight for my life. This third, You went this back one, to get the body. No, I had to. I had to. Uh, this third one, uh, no, 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 it was bad because I yeah. always gain so much weight mm, when I'm me pregnant. Too. I always gain so much weight. Yeah. And then with my first and second, I had them really close together. Mm-hmm. I think the age gap is less than 18 months. Mm-hmm. It's so embarrassing. My son's first birthday, I was like five months pregnant. Nicole. So Silence. People, like, 
So people came for like the birthday bash. Now like, and hey, we're like, happy birthday. Hey, 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 so hey. fast. We have, we're here to do birthday. Are we here for birthday or baby shower? Uh, uh, what both. kind of rubbish is this? At this point, yes. Like, it's so embarrassing. So that's so, it was really close. So it felt like one long pregnancy. pregnancy. So it was fine. So I was done with mm-hmm. that. And then to now come back and be, ah, no, 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 no. Mm. It wasn't easy. So I wanted to speak to you about that because I knew, and I remember, like, I remember it so clearly it when there. you announced your pregnancy. And I was like, oh yes. my gosh. Yes. Three? I know. <laughs> Her age gap and the age gap is crazy. I know. So you know, now that I'm saying it again, I'm just like, my goodness. <laughs> yes. <laughs> But it's amazing like when you're living your life like authentically, mm-hmm. right? It's like yeah. you don't know who is seeing it and who's impacted uh, yeah. by it because I saw it and I was like, that is so beautiful. That's crazy. Thank and if you. Veronica can have three, maybe I can have two. <laughs> I was thinking about it loosely. I didn't yeah, mean it no, for that it to happen. Going to really, I didn't know. You had already seen, you had received your miracle. That's the you thing. I'd already, already just from that post, I had already. <laughs> yes. Thanks, thanks, thanks. Thanks for sharing that. Mm-hmm. Um, so what is your favorite part about being a mom? What's the absolute best thing about being a mommy? Oh, my God. So there's so many things that I love about being a mother. Um, I love the time that I spend with them. I love the fact that I can create impact. I love the fact that I can actually influence them to be really good people. I love to see their growth. I, I, you know, many times I tell my kids, I can't wait to see the person you're going to become. Mm. Um, I like to be able to talk to them a lot um, and just understand them. You know, it's a beautiful thing. You have this person this little person in your life that god has blessed you with to be um responsible for how they turn out in life um and i'm able to create this impact innocently it's like a blank slate and i am i have been given the uh, permission to actually impact them um i love to see my kids sometimes even when they're sleeping just watching them and praying over them Mm, um it's just such a beautiful thing and even hearing them have conversations amongst themselves i love the fact that my kids are very close they bond so well um it's what i love i actually love spending time with my children you know sometimes they just really get on my nerves and i'm like you guys (laughs) are driving me insane (laughs) but other times you know i look for them i'm always like oh where are you people come and sit with me (laughs) and we like talk and you know just get to know them i'm getting to know them and i'm getting getting to create impact in their life and create memories with, with them are some of the things that I absolutely love about being a mom. Funny enough, it's not even dressing my kids. I would even think, you know, I remember people say, ah, now that you have a daughter, hey. you're going to dress her, you're going to... <laughs> I don't, I don't even, I, I, I hardly ever, like we, we keep her, her wardrobe very simple. Mm-hmm. Funny enough, my sons are even, well, one son and my daughter are very fashion forward, but um, nothing to do with me. But yeah, what I absolutely love about them is just seeing their growth. And seeing the fact that they are turning out to be really responsible and very kind and helpful. I know everybody says that about their kids, but my kids are actually really, you know, I really try to make an effort to make sure that they are really good. Um, Important. And, and, they're, and they're accountable for the things that they do and that they can make an impact in this world. So, um, yeah, it's just, that's that's what I love about being a mom. I love um, having conversations with moms, mm-hmm. um, like millennial moms, because I think that there is definitely more <laughs> of an um, intentionality in building the character of the child. Yeah. I think um, our parents mm-hmm. were more focused on us being successful. Yes. Whatever that's going to look like, mm-hmm. just go out uh, there and, and do succeed. It. Yeah. Um, and we're and here. I, and, we're yeah, yeah. And I feel like because of that, there's something lacking in, in in our generation mm-hmm. in terms of our humanity and who we are as people. Mm-hmm. And I think that as women, you know, we've kind of taken the charge. Yeah, of sharing. And so, yeah, of yeah. sharing. And it's like, okay, well, I'm also raising my kids mm-hmm. to be good because I want them to be good people. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. I want them to be nice to others. Yeah. I want them to treat other people with kindness yes. and respect yeah. and uh, and give everyone and accord people dignity because mm-hmm. they're human so they deserve dignity mm-hmm. and teach them to accept dignity as well and yeah. teaching them to be vulnerable which of is course. a word of course our parents have never heard of what yeah. is vulnerability yes. no what is strength mm-hmm. you have to you have go, out, strong. go out fight yes. Nigeria is hard <laughs> life is hard you must be tough every but, day um, so I <laughs> love right. that yeah. whenever I speak to moms and I'm asking them about raising their children they're all, they always apart from pushing them to succeed Mm -hmm. they are focused on who the child becomes so hearing you talk about Mm -hmm. your kids being kind and how that's important to you amazing I love that and, and very open you know I get home some days and my kids, they have this running thing. So I think my oldest started it and my other two follow. And he would say, oh, how was your day? You know, 
And I'm always like, my day was tough. My day was hard. I had this meeting. This client was mean. I'm very open up because I want them Amazing. to know that life is not buttercup and roses. You know, it's not like, how's your day? Fine. Like I tell them, I say, fine is not a response. Like fine mm. is, you know, that's not a good response. Like you have to actually discuss it and talk about that. So I am as open and as truthful as I can be. Um, like I tell them two things. We don't tell lies in our house and we are always honest and we communicate. So you, you, want, you want to, you know, moms is one of the things I try to tell friends and you, you just want to tell them the truth I'm not saying that you have to tell them you know every bad thing but mm-hmm, tell them the mm-hmm, truth it was mm-hmm. a difficult it was rough mm-hmm. you know the traffic today ah oh, you know it took me two hours to get to a meeting you know mm-hmm. sometimes and I'll tell them this is why you have to work hard you know you have mm-hmm, to work smart mm-hmm. and, you know you have to so that they understand like, you know it's not that mommy just what does she do you don't even know what I do you just mm-hmm, go out there so sometimes mm-hmm. they even go with me to work you know I'll take them along with me um, every once in a while so that they can kind of see you know when you've been in traffic with me for two hours you see how hard I'm working you know, so you understand so yeah I love that I actually learned so much from that just mm-hmm. now um, because yeah I tend not to really discuss too much with my kids like what I actually do, do like day yeah. to day uh-huh. and they're kind of figuring it out Ow. so my son was saying to me the other day because he saw me doing a video mm-hmm. and he was like oh is that for mummy summit and mm-hmm. I was like you know about you know about, you know about exactly. mommy's so they, These he's kids even, are very wise. They're wise and they're very smart. They're, they, they can my job you help me put on my fire stick and my what do you Netflix because I don't know how to operate it. <laughs> I'm like, please, my they'll be laughing come at on, me. Come, come on, and help, help me. me. And they notice everything. I remember um it was this has to be like maybe three months ago when when they came home one time and I was watching and they were like, Oh, you're watching TV, wow. And I'm like, oh my gosh, they noticed I never watch TV because I don't watch TV. And mm-hmm. so, you know, they were like, good for you. Put your feet up. You know, and I'm like, <laughs> okay. So they noticed they everything. Noticed. So it's really good to. It is just to communicate yeah. with them. Mm-hmm. Wow. Yeah. Note to self. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> and then what has been one of your worst days hmm. of being a mom? One horrendous day. Like this has to be one of the worst days I've of being had, a mom. And um I mean, I've had a few, like there was the one time that I, okay, well, this, this was recent. and I, I felt really bad. I forgot my kids in school. Like it, it just, it just literally slipped. I, you know, I, and I don't know why, because normally somebody would call my, my nanny that picks them up will call me. But I think I told her I would pick them up that day or they requested for me to pick them up that day. And I really, really tried to pick them up. I literally had forgotten. I got home and the school had been calling my phone. Like, oh no, I felt so bad the when, I, when was... I got to this. And you know, both, I had to pick the both of them up. My, my son was frown. I mean, the way he, he I, I felt so bad. I was just like, oh my God, I actually, even now when I think about it, I'm just like, I'm constantly asking people to remind me. So I was saying reminders, please remind me that I have to pick up my kids. I have to, you know, so yes, I know that I'm not, but the days that I say that I'm going to do something, I have to remember to do it. Mm -hmm. And that was probably one of the worst. I mean, the one that was a really bad time, I hadn't even had the child at the time, but my my delivery was a really bad experience. So um, I think that that was probably one of the worst times with pregnancy or being a mom but I hadn't I wasn't a mom yet but it was um, still part of it but I remember picking up my and it was two kids so I know that um, it was one of my worst oh that must be so hard and that's the thing like the guilt I was would late. crush Nicole, you school was over oh, as in they no. had clothes as in they were done they had been calling me come on pick up your kids madame last thing life man where like, are you <laughs> Real madam, where are you? We will drop them off <laughs> at this point. You give and us an address. We will like, bring them to anyone you. Anyone that can walk, please, <laughs> your kids. Oh, no, the guilt. Like, I can't even imagine. Oh, you mm. must have felt so terrible. I, I did. The guilt. And there was no one to pick them. moms, and no, and thing is, and moms, we love guilty. Mm. We can carry this thing on our head. Yes. Oh, no, no, no. That would sometimes, be normally, you know, you have people, their dad would pick them up. I would pick them up. But that day, it was like, I was supposed to pick them up. There was no one else to pick them up. Sometimes I'll even schedule, you know? I just, I don't know. Yeah, but these things happen. And then, you know, man. I have like, everyone has like two, three phones. You know, network in Nigeria now, your phone. That's so the thing. The phone that Nigeria the network was do off. better. By the time, you know, I got home, traffic that day, I was so irritated. Get home, I look and I'm like, oh my God. You know, like where it's like, panic. <laughs> How many missed calls? Oh my God. I was even so embarrassed to even, oh yeah, straight to the school, straight to the school. My son, my daughter, do- and then we had to pick up my dog. Hey, my problem. My dad even sent me a message. Where are you, madam? 
school is over. <gasps> oh no, that must have been so tough. It but was. listen, but they're, I mean, they're alive, things they're happen. well. These things oh. happen. Like, it's not easy being a mom now. It's look not. at look at you. You now have like 100 businesses. <laughs> no, Only you. one person. You're doing your best now. Please, these no, things happen. Trying. So, yeah, it's just also give yourself mm-hmm. gr- grace. And thank yeah. you so much for even talking about yeah. that. You know, I think it's important that we as mom con- moms continue to share some of these things mm-hmm. that um, that happen to yeah. us and just so you know you're not alone as yes. well because you're not the only mom you're, that, not, you're you not, know. not you're not We're so trying. thank you thank you thank you for sharing that mm-hmm. um, do you have any exciting projects you're working on at the moment anything we can look out for um yes I mean I, I always guess why it seems like I always got something going on you know <laughs> I always have something going on I mean I have a um, coming up July 10th, I believe it is. Yes, July 10th. I have a personal style class coming. It's going to be virtual. Amen. I have I love that, that coming um, for women who are trying to like detox, find themselves, understand their style, how to dress for their body types. I have that coming up. Um, and I think that that's the biggest one that I have coming up now. And then as a year this later this year I have a couple other things that we're trying to iron out that okay. will be um, announced in they'll due be course. announced yeah when that comes out because we're still trying to you know put things in but one of them has to do with um, teenagers and girls really focused on empowering young girls and I'm really 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 excited about that project but it's still in the pipelines and that's coming out okay awesome mm, well we'll be yeah. on the lookout thank you so thank much you. for that so um, I'm a big believer in affirmations mm-hmm. and so I look for an affirmation every day mm-hmm. I say it to myself I reflect on it throughout the day. Mm -hmm. And my affirmation for today is, by allowing myself to be happy, Mm -hmm. I inspire my family to be happy as well. Oh, I like that. That's a beautiful one. So what do you... What do you get from that? Like by allowing myself to be happy, I inspire my family to be happy as well. So what I what I take from that is making time for myself. Yes. Um, I am that I am very intentional with making time for myself, um, which I've started to learn to do that in the last three or four years, actually. Hmm. Um, before. Yeah. Yeah. So before fairly it was, recently. Yeah. Fairly recently. Before it was go, 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 go. You could call me two o'clock in the morning. I'll pick up my phone. You can call me at 9 p.m. I'll pick up my phone. Um, and so remember how I was saying in the mornings, I'll start work or whatever sometimes I turn my phone off completely once the kids have gone to school turn off my phone till 9 30 sometimes till 10 and if I want to meditate or I want to pray or I just want to relax I do that um, I now take trips uh, with my girlfriends at the beginning of the year we do one girlfriend trip a year oh um, yes I just love because that. I'm just like girl I need to get my group back I don't Listen. know what y'all talking about <laughs> this is my life and I need to live it because like you said if I am not 100% or if I am not happy, I won't be anything to anyone. I will be useless to you. Yeah. So I always have to do that. Even when we take family vacations or trips like that, I always make sure that I have go for dinner or a dinner date or, you know, just make time for myself doing that. I do get my massages often, um, you know, so I, I do. I, I make time for myself all the time, you know, and I same thing with my scheduling. I pencil it in an appointment with myself. Good. Um, I and love then, that. And then that, that works for me. But just finding yourself and making sure you're happy. And when you're happy, you're able to exude happiness and share happiness with your family. Mm-hmm. And then that any returns because then you're you're happy. You give happiness. They're receiving happiness from you and then everyone's happy. Mm-hmm. So that's what and, I get from that. And they learn to be happy as well because they, do they as know, well. okay, I also need to, I need to make myself happy exactly. and work on that within mm-hmm. myself because I've seen that modeled in my mom exactly. with her being intentional with her time yeah. and taking care of herself mm-hmm. in that way. So yeah. love, love, love. Yes. Veronica, it's been such a pleasure. <laughs> I'm so honored <laughs> that you came on here to have this chat Thank with me. You. Thank you for everything you said and for your honesty. Thank you so much and for having me. we hope me. you come back. I would definitely soon. come back. Please. Hey, see, if you need me, I am always there to give advice or, you know, just share my input or even listen, you know. We're all in this together as moms. We're we're all struggling. We don't. No one knows it all. Yeah. We're all learning. You know. Even if you have five kids, you're still learning. One Absolutely. child, you're still learning, and you can always make an impact because your journey is completely different, even as similar as it is to the next woman. Amen. Yeah. Oh. Mm-hmm. Amen. What a way to close out the show. <laughs> thank thank you. you. Thank you so much, Veronica, and thank, <laughs> thank you, you so much, guys, for listening. Until next thank time. You. Bye, guys. Bye.